Hello students, welcome to BBA 204. In part 2 of my lecture, I will be talking about formulating a corporate level strategy using the BCG matrix. So, for formulating corporate level strategy, managers sometimes use BCG matrix. This matrix was developed by Boston Consulting Group. The BCG, the Boston Consulting Group matrix, organizes businesses along two dimensions, business growth rate and the market share. Business growth rate is concerned with how rapidly the entire industry is growing. So is the company in a rapidly growing industry or is the company in a slow growing industry? So business growth rate pertains to how rapidly or quickly the entire industry is growing. The market share, on the other hand, defines whether a business unit has a larger or smaller market share than competitors. Market share is always measured in terms of the total revenue or the total sales of the company as a whole. The combination of market share and business growth rate provides four categories to use within a corporate portfolio. Here, as you see in this chart, 8.5, the BCG matrix has developed four types of firms four types of firms, stars, cash cows, question marks, and dogs. So let's analyze each of these firms. So who are the star firms? What are the characteristics of star firms? The star firm has a large market share in a rapidly growing industry. The star is important because it has additional growth potential and profits should be reinvested for future growth and extra profits. So the star company will generate a positive cash flow as industry matures and market growth slows. Some examples of star companies are Apple, Google, Amazon are all star companies. So let's look at the second type, the cash cow. Which companies are considered cash cow companies? The cash cow exists in a mature, slow growth industry, but has a large market share. So unlike the star companies, the industry of the cash cow companies are already mature, slow growing industry. In this industry, the cash cow company has a large market share. The cash cow has a positive cash flow and can be milked to feed riskier businesses. For instance, think about cash cow, com cash cow companies which has a positive cash flow and which also dominate the market in terms of market share. MTA, MTA, our subway system or the company that owns or that operates our subway system is considered a cash cow. MTA has a monopoly power and it has generated so much profits. The third company is the question mark. The question mark exists in a new, rapidly growing industry, but only has small market share. Just like the star company, question marks also operate in a rapidly growing industry. But these comp companies has small market share. They are also known as infant, infant companies because they are the new entrant to the market. The question mark, however, is also a risky company. It could become a star or it could totally fail. So the reason why we put a question mark is because we don't know the future prospects of this company. Again, it could become a star or it could fail. Think about the company Uber. 
Uber, few years ago, or when it first started, we could consider it as a star company because we would, sorry, we would consider it as a question mark company, not a star, star company. We would consider it as a question mark company when it first started. We would not know at the time whether Uber would become a star or fail. Now let's look at the fourth type, the dog. The dog is a poor performer with small market share in a slow growth industry. Again, the dog is a poor performer with small market share in a slow growth industry. A dog provides little profit and may be targeted for divestment or liquidation. Because the dog is a poor performer and it, has, it hasn't made enough profit, it can be liquidated. The dog is essentially a failing or bankrupt company. Take the example of some firms on shaky grounds at the moment, especially in food and fashion retail, like Sears, Kmart, JCPenney. They're all considered dogs because they are poor performers in a rapidly growing industry. Now let's talk about how comp companies formulate corporate level strategies, starting with the diversification strategy. Diversification strategy is generally uh, involves actions that allow the firm to move into new lines of businesses. So diversification can be related, it can also be unrelated. Okay, unrelated diversification is expansion into new lines of business that are not related to company's original business. If the company is offering new valuable products and services, if it is moving into entirely new lines of business that are not related to company's original business or products or services, we consider it as a unrelated diversification. Unrelated diversification happens when an organization expands into a totally new lines of products or services. For instance, Amazon moving from online retail to food retail by purchasing Whole Foods is considered to be an unrelated diversification. Managers may also pursue diversification opportunities to create value through a strategy of vertical integration. Vertical integration means that the company expands into businesses that either produce the supplies needed to make products or that distribute and sell those products to customers. So there are two types of vertical integration strategies. Backward integration versus forward integration. Backward versus forward integration. Backward integration applies to suppliers, whereas the forward integration applies to retailers or distributors. For instance, when a company buys its own supplier company and starts producing inputs internally, we call this strategy a backward integration strategy. So I'm repeating, when a company buys its own supplier company and starts producing inputs internally, starts manufacturing its own inputs, in other words, this is called backward integration strategy. For instance, Apple produces its own microchips. It does so by using cheap labor in China. However, it does not buy the microchips from the company Intel. So by uh, getting rid of the supplier Intel and by manufacturing its own inputs in internally, Apple is using a backward integration strategy. On the other hand, when a company buys its own distributor or 
owns a retail shop, this is called forward integration. That's it. Unlike backward in integration, forward integration applies to distributors or retailers. So when a company buys its own distributor or owns a retail shop, this is called forward integration. For instance, think about the car companies. Almost all car companies own their own car dealers. All car companies own their car dealers. For instance, you have to go to Mercedes dealer to buy a Mercedes car. You have to go to Toyota dealer to buy a Toyota car. But those dealers are all owned by the car companies. Think about Apple. Apple owns its own retail store on Fifth Avenue where they also sell computers. By using both forward and backward integration strategy, Apple has become a vertically integrated company. Thank you for listening to my lecture so far, and in part three of my lecture, I will talk about Michael Porter's five forces of analysis. Thank you, and see you in part three. Have a good day.